Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here, and I hope you're having a great day. I've been getting a lot of questions about a particular code change in the 2023 NEC, and that is for kitchen, peninsulas, and islands. No question there was a massive change that happened in the 2023 code, but it's being really misunderstood and, and misapplied, and quite frankly, it's a little bit tricky to, to really get to the bottom of it. So I was hoping to kind of clear up the myths and the misconceptions. Uh, you might not like what I have to say in this, and you may not agree with me, but I'm simply going to say what the code says and recognizing that it's not perfect and that we'll probably fix it in 2026. But it's an important rule and it's an important conversation. So let's go ahead and get started and find out what they did in 210.52 C2 in the 2023 National Electrical Code. Let's get started. Okay, so 210.52C, countertops and work surfaces. 210.52, dwelling unit receptacle outlets. It's so important that you always remember the context of what you're reading and where you're reading it. Listen, I, I've got, you know, 100 books in my office. I've got my, my electrical books back there and I got my other books over there. If I were to open a book, and I don't care what book it is, a code book of a religious text, a Harry Potter book, a Stephen King, it doesn't matter. If you just open a book and you read a sentence, you can't possibly understand what that sentence means because you have to have a context. You have to know where you are in the book, right? And that is always very true in the National Logical Code. So we start with Article 90. 90.2, the scope of the code, says it covers the installations of conductors and equipment. So if you're installing something, you need to keep reading the code book, right? So we're gonna be making an installation, so we're gonna read the code. We go to Article 210 because we're installing a branch circuit, right? Branch circuit starts at the last breaker or fuse, ends at the utilization equipment. So we're wiring receptacles for kitchen or dwelling in a kitchen, so we're in Article 210. The next thing you have to do is you go to the part of the article, part one, part two, part three. It's imperative to understand what part three of article 210 covers. And again, you might not like what I have to say here, but it, it doesn't matter. I, I don't necessarily like what I'm about to say here. That doesn't matter. What matters is the words in the book. Part three is what? Required outlets. These are the rules for the receptacles that you are required to install, all right? If you decide to install receptacles that are not required by 210.52, that's fine. It's not the wild, wild west. You can't just install old, you know, two-wire, non-grounding, you know, non-GFCI protected receptacles because they're not required receptacles. There are still rules. They're just not the rules of 210.52, and that's going to be important to remember. So, for example, you know, 210.52 says this section provides the requirements for the receptacles. The receptacles required by this section are in addition to any receptacle that is part of a luminaire or appliance or controlled by a listed wall-mounted control device, you know, a switched receptacle, located within cabinets or cupboards or located more than five and a half feet above the floor. We all know that in a house you can install receptacles above five and a half feet above the floor, obviously, right? Your garage door opener just doesn't count as a required receptacle. So you can have receptacles that are not required by the NEC. Part 3 and 210.52 talks about required receptacle outlets. And again, it's going to make sense why I'm emphasizing that. Let's go to subsection C. I'm only going to talk about islands and peninsulas in this discussion. Countertops or work surfaces that are 12 inches or wider in kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar must have receptacle outlets as indicated in one through three. Now item one, I'm not gonna talk about. Item one is your wall space, right? Your two foot, four foot, you know, receptacle around the wall countertop. Uh, that didn't really uh, experience any, any significant changes, so we're not gonna cover that. So back there on the left, you got your countertop. Over here on the right, you've got your work surface, right? Doesn't matter whether it's a countertop or a work surface, you gotta follow items one through three. Islands and peninsulas. Here's what the code says. A receptacle outlet is not required for an island or peninsula countertop or work surface. You do not have to have a receptacle for a peninsula or an island in the 2023 code. 
Now, in the 2017 code, you needed receptacles for islands and peninsulas, and generally speaking, you only needed one receptacle for an island or peninsula, unless you had a large cooktop or a large sink, and, and it effectively cut the island or peninsula into two separate countertop spaces. Then you would need one on each side. Now, in the 2020 code, they made a, a massive change, and they said, look, some islands are, are as big as the kitchen itself, and that's kind of the evolution of kitchens and dwellings, is we have big islands and peninsulas, so we need more receptacles than just one. Now, what's the magic number? And they said, well, we're going to base it off the square footage of the island or peninsula. So that's what they did in the 2020 code, and if you had a regular, you know, 25 square foot island, you needed two receptacle outlets. If you had some monstrosity that's 100 square feet, you needed six. Well, six receptacles for an island is probably a bit overkill. So they kind of went back to the drawing board for the 2023. And the discussion that came up was about receptacles being installed beneath the island or countertop, or beneath the, the countertop surface. And if you look closely at my picture here, you might see that there is a receptacle there. I just kind of painted over it in Photoshop to, to hide it, okay? So that was the argument, is about the receptacle down here and the safety hazards that it creates. And it does create safety hazards. There is data from the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and it's available for public review that shows over the last 30 years there are an estimated, I believe it was about 10,000 burn injuries from people pulling down cooking equipment on top of themselves and getting burned. And in fact, there were even deaths. You know, if, if, you're, a, if you're a child and you pull down a crock pot with boiling oil, I mean, third degree burns are you know, complete debilitating, disfiguring burns. It would be a horrible injury. And there's also been deaths. Like I said, if you're if you're a little guy and you pull cook, uh, you know, one of the the crock pots or a ninja down on top of your head, your head's not even your cranium's not even fully formed yet. There were dead bodies. We have had deaths from people pulling cords down on top of themselves, and it's not just kids either. Uh, you know, you've had older people uh, that have walked by, and you, you you get your hand caught on it, or you get your belt caught on it, and you end up pulling it down, or you don't see it, and you turn around, and you pull it down on top of you. Uh, it's a it's a more common injury than you might think. So in the 2023 code, they said, okay, you know what? We're not going to require receptacles for islands or peninsulas anymore. If you want to put one in, fine, but it's not a requirement. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to open up the actual code text. And where I'm getting this code text from, but <clears throat> by the way, is NFPA link. So <clears throat> if you don't have NFPA link... I highly recommend it. Uh, look, this isn't a sales pitch for NFPA Link, but to me, I couldn't live without it. So here is the 2023, and I'm going to open it up and go down to Chapter 2 and Article 210. I'm going to scroll over here to 210.52, and we're going to look at the actual words in the code book because I try to paraphrase the code to make it more easily understandable. But when it comes right down to it, we need to read the actual words in the book. So. That's NFPA link right there. I just copied and pasted it, so let me do this. It says receptacle outlets, if installed to serve an island or peninsula countertop or work surface, must be installed in accordance with C3. Now C3 talks about the height, where the receptacle is as it relates to the countertop surface, so a vertical elevation, okay? Then we'll go on to read, and it says if a receptacle outlet is not provided to serve an island or countertop or peninsula, because it, it's optional now, provisions must be provided for future addition of a receptacle outlet to serve the island or peninsula countertop or work surface. Now, I know that's not perfect code language, but let, let's kind of figure out what we're talking about. So first of all, don't need a receptacle for the island or the peninsula. Not required. This is a peninsula. You do not need any receptacles for the peninsula. If you choose not to put one in, we're recognizing that the homeowner might want one in the future. And we're not going to make it so difficult that they're ripping down walls and everything else. So if you're not putting in a receptacle outlet, then accommodations to add one later must be provided. Again, I know that's not perfect code language, but in my opinion, if you've got a floor slab like this that's concrete, then putting a, an empty raceway 
out to the peninsula or island would satisfy the requirement. Uh, now, if you didn't connect the raceway, you know, with a connector into the box, then I would say, you know, if you're just using it as a sleeve, then I would say you might have to pull UF cable, you know, and then put it in a box and put it behind the dishwasher or, or put it under the sink, you know, put it under the cabinet. It doesn't have to be readily accessible. It just has to be accessible, not permanently closed in. Uh, if you're doing you know, the, the, if you got a wood floor below, then I would say run a piece of NM cable uh, underneath the cabinet, put it in a box, put a blank cover on it, and away you go. So you have to have future provisions to add one later on. All right. C3, where in relation to the countertop surface do your required receptacles have to be? Let me, let me ask you guys a question because I, I know people are going to get upset about this. Would it be a violation of the National Electrical Code? to put a receptacle up higher than 20 inches above the countertop. Of course not, right? If I wanted to put one over here on the side of this cabinet, if I wanted to put one in the cabinet, that's not a violation, right? It just doesn't qualify as a required receptacle. So your required countertop receptacles cannot be higher than 20 inches above the countertop. It's the required receptacles. Fine, that's been in the code for a very long time. The other place that you can put required receptacles is in the countertop if it's listed for countertop use or if it's listed for work surface use. Those are two different things. A receptacle that's listed for use in a, in a work surface, part of the test is we get basically a cup of water and we pour it on the receptacle. For receptacles listed for countertops, we get a bucket of water and pour it on the receptacle. So, in a kitchen countertop, you can use a countertop receptacle, all right? So, <clears throat> if you have a kitchen work surface that's not a countertop but a work surface, maybe you've got kind of a, a permanent desk type of thing, then you can put receptacles listed for work surfaces in the work surface. Here is that receptacle in action, by the way. So, here's my pop-up receptacle listed for countertops, and we're good to go. Now here is your work surface, all right? This is the dining room over here, and we've got a big, long work surface. So I could put receptacles listed for countertops or receptacles listed for work surfaces, either way. Those are my options, folks. For the required receptacles, they can be in the countertop or in the work surface, or they can be above the work surface. Full stop, that's it, those are your options. Notably absent, is an allowance for receptacles to be installed below the countertop. Now, again, this was the target of the change, was people pulling cooking appliances down and suffering horrific injuries, and again, even deaths in some instances. I'm gonna be very careful how I say this. <clears throat> this receptacle is a violation if it is a required receptacle for the purposes of a countertop. Can I put in receptacles that are optional? Yes. Could I put a receptacle down here that's not required by the code and put it underneath the countertop? Yes, I could. And I hate what I'm saying, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I like this code or hate this code. And Newsflash, it doesn't matter whether you hate this code or love this code. The words in the book are what matters. If you're an inspector, you can't write a person up for this. This is an optional receptacle. It's not a required receptacle. All right, so if a person wants to put it there, they can. If you're an electrician, I'm going to tell you that putting a receptacle down there is a very bad idea. Number one, you're probably going to have a fight with the inspector because the inspector might not read the code as closely as, as we have. But much more importantly, you don't want to be the cause of a horrific injury. Um, I can tell you that I, I, I've acted as an expert witness in several court cases. And look, I don't, I don't live my life being worried about getting sued. That's just not how I, I, I couldn't sleep if I worried about getting sued all the time. But here's the thing. This is a much more common injury than one might think. And if a homeowner, you know, has an injury to them or their loved ones, they're probably going to get an attorney and they're going to look at it and they're going to come after you. And you're going to have some really difficult questions to answer if you choose to install a non-required receptacle down there, knowing that the code probably didn't want you to put it down there 
but you were able to comply by the skin of your teeth. I, I've been in lawsuits. Remember, if you get sued as an electrician, it's not going to be a civil court. You're not going to go to jail. It's going to be, excuse me, it's not going to be a criminal court. All right, it's not going to be a criminal court. It's going to be a civil court. So the question isn't going to be, did you comply with the NEC? They'll ask that, but they'll also ask, did you follow the best practices, the highest standard of care? And you're going to say, well, you know, I watched this YouTube video and this guy said, you know, the, the code says this and I figured you could do it and it complies even though it's obviously not the intent. You're going to have a difficult question to ask. And how is a jury going to react? I don't know. But I have seen, uh, I have seen a manufacturer get held accountable for providing a product that complied at the current, uh, you know, where the appliance was installed. It complied, so it wasn't a violation. But there was a newer requirement that was applicable in other locations, and the manufacturer chose not to comply with those newer requirements because it was in a, in a state that, uh, that hadn't adopted those requirements yet. And that manufacturer had asked answer some very difficult questions, and I can tell you they ended up losing. So anyway, if I was an electrician, there is no way I would install a receptacle under the countertop. I would do what the code requires. I would provide one for future installation, and I would tell the homeowner, I will put in a pop-up receptacle, or I will leave. And if you, the homeowner, choose to put in a receptacle beneath the countertop, you're going to do whatever you're going to do, right? I can't stop you. So there you go. Um, again, you don't have to love this change or hate this change. You don't even have to agree with what I'm saying, but that's what the code says. There's been a lot of discussion and a lot of myths and, and quite frankly, a lot of misinformation that's been published. So I just wanted to kind of clear up the issue. So there you go. Love it, hate it, doesn't matter. That's 210.52 in the National Electrical Code. Have a great day. See you next time. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.